This is Political Blind Date. No, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, to be sure. And um, but detention still happens. It, it, way, it's it's so, it's so I you know I, I actually I, I still do like I, I routinely mm-hmm. call the holding centers and, mm-hmm. and and ask them if I see people who are who come out or who are in detention. They call me. I always say, okay, can you make sure that there are no children? For the most part, I I haven't had since uh, since the directive. I haven't come across uh, a single one. Um, I recently met with the Children's Aid Society in Peel, and um, you know, they're not aware of any, any right now. Um, so when we look at what's happened in the U.S., you know, it's like we weren't that far off a few years ago, you know. Um, well, I, it, maybe not to the same extent, but but look, the the, the elements of it were, yeah. were no. I mean, it's not to say we're perfect. Let's be yeah. clear. Um, and what's happening in the United States, though, I would argue is quite different. I mean, they actively have immigration policies that discriminate knowingly. Um, you know, now we, we separate out children, too. Like, uh, we've had refugee cases where people are being separated out, children and families. I've met some of the folks uh, in the Lower Mainland. Uh, and, and so there are but, things but the, that but we the need to do. But the directive is very clear. Right. Uh, the, the, so, so since that time, I think if if you do find so, so, so in the in the instance where I'm talking about how people are separated, it it, it goes something like this. Um, so, for example, you could have a situation where a child and the the uh, parent has come. In fact, I, there is a recent case. Mm. The girl came, and the mother brought her here because she was going to fa- face uh, female gender mutilation. Yeah. Uh, so they brought her here. They made a, uh, she made a, a claim uh, for both her and the daughter. Mm-hmm. The daughter was accepted and recognized as a refugee, but not the mother. Mm-hmm. And so they, they actively w- are separating the child and the mother to say, and creating an orphan situation. The girl how, will be how, here. How old is the girl? Uh, she's under age. Uh, so the, the indication So she'll become uh, a ward of the child, but it and be, then it been the mother is going though. to be de- deported because her refugee case is rejected, and because she was not faced with female genital mutilation. Mm. I mean, the, how does that make sense? To like, how how can we bring in a policy like that that allow for that to happen? Uh, but yet that was a real case uh, you know occurring and and was brought to my attention I thought oh come on really and and, and those are the instances where uh, you know the agencies right the humanitarian compassion well they're gonna file the agency case are quite and, helpful. And, um, and, and I've I've had you know enormous success whenever we have these gaps and but, these, but, but, but you know um, but given the situation that we have, where we are under-resourced, the RB stressed, you talk about efficiency earlier. Why do we even? Why do we even have to make people go through that, right? Why do they have to go through that process, tying up resources that we don't have, and creating heartache and separation uh, for families, and that trauma to which they have experienced, as though it's not traumatic enough right. for them to have to flee their country for this reason, and they only be further traumatized in this way with so much uncertainty. You know, so you want to talk about efficiency. Why don't we fix that? That would save resources and save hardship. But but I, but I do think there are circumstances that are sometimes not contemplated in the act, right? And and that's yes. that's where I think the humanitarian compassion is like a catch-all that does you know, look at all of these factors. But right? agency claims are very difficult to make and very onerous to. They're, they're onerous, right? but but um, I I found that if put right, they've been spot on. Right, like, like they, there's but, very I mean, when they make there, the decisions. There, there, there are very few that I look and say. I, I mean, I would say there's maybe one in the last three years I've seen, and, and I said this is wrong. This is ridiculous, right? Um, by and large, they've they've been very merit based and 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 uh, yeah, no, contextualized, I, 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 uh, and and they've been successful. So I think in a situation like this. Um, I mean, these are the safeguards in our system, right? No, so, no, I'm saying, like, I mean, we should have efficiency processing, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm also saying, though, you know, if, with the overall policy piece, should we be making people go through these steps 
mm. uh, extra steps. And again, if you want to talk about nothing else other than efficiencies within a system to save taxpayers money, utilize that resource to process claims that are backlogged, that are you know jammed in the system. Why don't we do that? That mm. would be a wise use of taxpayers' money, and I think create efficiencies that's good for the family, and I think good for Canada as well and our reputation. This is political blind date.